have a voice and a platform. Waiting Now is the basic info. Reporting for Waiting Now, Mariah Mushka Conte. And I have a tool and a voice. So. Inclusion of girls and women into every aspect of society is what we want. We the bring can the news so you na you don't want. Waiting Now, na the basic info. Waiting Now, the basic info. Welcome to the 16th episode of Waiting Out. As you already know, we're going to be bringing entertainment, fun, the drama. But listen, before we get to that, I am Booba, aka Limba Swag. And guess what? I'm here with the one and only beautiful, my co host, Mayatu M. Ducure. And ladies and gentlemen, the headlines for today are Day for Girls organization in Ghana provides sanitary pads for young schoolgirls in Ghana. Pour water supply for St. Patrick's Anglican Primary School in Ghana. And last but not least, in Sierra Leone, increments of school fee in government secondary schools, and many more. Marhaba bikum and hello my beautiful people and welcome to the 16th episode of Waiting Now. I know you're wondering there's someone missing. Yes, Nessa no the Idongo holiday and we are wishing her a happy vacation and we can't wait for it because we're already missing it. And our sister program, News Generation in Ghana, Miss Efwa Akwa Harrison, now is Mrs. We wish you a very happy marriage life and uh, more children, many children, twins, triplets, you know, all of them. In our area today, we have Al Hassan Jalo, who is talented at drawing. And in the zone, Zainab is back from Ghana and you get Boku Boku Tine for it, Na in Kona. Landmarks from Ghana. And don't forget that Marina will, will be reading your comments on our Facebook Waiting Now page. So get ready for that. So, as you already know, before we get to all the entertainment stuff, let me go see what in Salon and the world gets for it today in this week's News Blast. <music> story we join our reporter Zainab Khan reporting from Ghana on an organization known as Days for Girls that distributes reusable sanitary pads especially for young girls going to school that cannot afford the one-time use disposable pads. Let's join our reporter Zainab for more on the story. This is Seya, a 14 year old girl of the St. Patrick Anglican Premier School in J. Koido, Central Region of Ghana. It's not a school day like any other school, but there's something peculiar about this community school. People found in this community are mainly farmers and traders. Among these, a set is always fond of giving out gifts to female pupils all in for a special reason. Locally made sanitary pads, that's what it is. Special gifts for special reasons. Young girls in this deprived community made use of these locally made sanitary pads in place of the modern day pads because a good number cannot afford buying the modern day fashion sanitary pads. Yes, I like it because sometimes when you buy the pad and sometimes too we don't have money to buy it. And when we buy it we face many problems. When we finish using the pads, we face some problems like like Maybe me, I face the problem when I finish using the powder. My under will be paining me because certain of the powder are not good for me to use it. The visitor taught us how to use the pad because some of us, we don't have money to buy pad. So if because of that, you will not come to school so that if we sit on our chair, ourself, the bride will come out from our swing from so that the boys will laugh at us. So. They gave, they gave this one to us so that we will use it after you finish using it, we will wash them so that the next day, if our, if our mess is for which we can use it. The local parts are made of woolen cotton in three folders and can be layered for extra comfort to help fix girls' menstrual issues. The parts can be washed after each use and sun dry, iron when there is no sunlight. Most girls stay out of school when they are menstruating. Sarah said she is so grateful for the wooden cutting pads given to her. 
She added that whenever she uses sanitary pads, it leaves her with infections. I just use rack, and today if they have produced this too, I, I like it. But I'm, I don't feel well because I like to use pad always, but because I use the rack, I don't feel it good. She also said that the cutting pads will help her save money. Another buttress that, during a menstrual period, she stay at home because when she goes to school in that state, boys laugh at her with her uniform messed up. She also went further to say that her parents cannot afford buying a sanitary pad. This for Girls is an organization that distributes usable sanitary pads for girls like Sarah and others. Each gift of bag contains two holders for the sanity towels, which are waterproof, eight sanity towels, a cake of soap, pants, and a towel. The use of this sanitary bag will help increase girls' attendance in school. Hopefully, many more girls who cannot afford sanitary pads can access this type of opportunity. Reporting for Waiting Now, Zainab Kanu. Thank you very much, Zainab, for that report. I hope say you know that development away there and Ghana will come back in our salon so we go up the picking away the go school and yeah so too. And uh, now increments on school fees. The government of Sierra Leone has increased the school secondary school fees for next year on government secondary schools. Let's join our reporter Erica who has more on the story. A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Former Secretary General of the United Nations, Kofi Annam said, Education is a human right with immense power to transform. On its cornerstone rests the foundation of freedom, democracy and sustainable human reform. For any nation to develop, there should be free, compulsory and quality education for all. But this does not seem to be happening in Sierra Leone, as the school fees in government secondary schools have escalated by 5,000 leones. You might say this is a minimal amount, but there are parents who struggled so much in paying school fees for their children in the past academic year. Well, I want to tell the government to reduce the school fees. Then it is not all parents that be able to afford the money to pay school fees for their children. Okay, so how do you think this has affected young people? Or well, it will affect young people, sorry. Well, they will make children to they will they will make some children to drop out and okay. also they will make children to come they will make children to stop going to school okay. and also the some parents because if they do ask they some parents if they do not have money they will tell their children sell for them to sell so yes, that they involved into hawking right yes okay. so that after we we'll pay your school fees we we'll go back to school well let me see it, it is good because really you know, the, the teachers are not being paid on time, you understand? Because, because um, the time that the, 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 the teachers are actually should be paid, they didn't pay them on time. So I, I, I think that this is a good idea for them, especially because they also have a peop, uh, their children to be responsible for. So if this idea comes, definitely it is good because they the, are the, the, the increasing their salaries as well. Well, let's not look at the young people. You should also look at the teachers that are teaching us. Well, let's say the school fees, I think it's necessary that they have increased it. Because most of the teachers, let's say, for like example, a certain time back, the government sent a voucher, and some teachers' names were not on the list. And it is the school fees that we paid that the principal have to take and pay those teachers that the name was not on the list. So I think it's necessary because the, the principal, he doesn't have the goal in his own, in his own way to pay the teachers. Okay. He will only get it from the school coffers, the school fees that we paid, and he can settle the teachers that their name were, were not on the list. Well, you know, mean anything, but it means something, but because, like, some of the parents in this country, let us say some of the kids, they, 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 then some people and then at this country wouldn't get money. For the one that will get money, not a problem. But like the one that will not get money back themselves, then go take and say thing hard for them. So for let the picking they all feel that normal way then at this country. Yeah, I feel say the government for left and the same way where it day. So the poor one they know they take themselves different 
out from the one that the parents they get. Let they all do that same way. They if fine, but if you look and back in other way around, you know, go look okay. fine. Presently, me know the work. My wife now for the market they do. Starting from last year, where they not be not even add it. Then the drive with girl picking there. And we will not forget about girl child school fee in this country. Girl child education in this country has been free. We will pay money for the first time. At the end of the, the term, then they call me back, they will follow money, then give me. But this time around, all that one they don't cut off. No more girl child education free in this country. And the worst of it, they can add back for our school fee. So this is a big, big problem to we the parents then. Thank you very much, Eric, for that bit of information. Now, moving back to Ghana, poor water supply at St. Patrick's Anglican Primary School in Ghana. Reporter Abdul SCC has more for us. The St. Patrick Anglican Primary School in Jai Kodra at the central region of Ghana faced challenges in accessing clean drinking water. According to pupils of the school, they stated that the school depends only on rainwater and they have only one poly tank which they use to accumulate water whenever it rains. Lucy Azuma Anomatsky, the personal superintendent of the school, stated that the problem of safe drinking water becomes more difficult during the dry season. We were having a borehole in front of the school building, but they told us that the pipe is spoiled, the borehole is spoiled, and then they took the tents away and they never turned up again. But we have school poly tank for the children. That's where they drink water. But if it is dry season, we have to go to the wells and then pipes to buy for the school children. We are pleading with you people, the NGOs, to give us, to come and repair the borehole for us and give us poly tanks for water. As pupils of the school take the risk of going to the stream in order to fetch water, often, People in the community do also empty their waste products in the streams used by the school. Staff and pupils of the school are usually at risk of getting sick whenever they drink the water. The water can use it. At first we have this pipe, but now it has spots so we can't get water. We have some poly tank there, the plants provide for us. So if it rains, so we keep if it is rain, we keep the water inside. So when it's going to dry drying season. We can't get water, so we have to go to the uh, we have to go to the water side and bring water to the school. So this has been our problem we are facing. So if they can, we pray that if they can repair the pipe for us. Uh, so, uh, the water, the water is dead. The water is dirty, but you still go on and drink it. Yes. Why don't you think that it will affect your health? But it is because we don't have water. Because we don't have water. So what do you want people to do about it? We want people to come and help us so that we can get some uh, more pollutants in this area. Okay, okay. So you mean all the houses around, they don't have tap? Mm. They all depend on rain water? Mm. Um, some of them have taps, small, small ones. Okay. So why don't you go there and get water to drink? Why? When you go there, you pay money before. We all have a role to play. Staff and pupils of the school also are calling on non-governmental organizations and stakeholders to help improve and provide safe drinking water for the school. The issue of water shortage is not only affecting the Ghanaian community, but of course the Sierra Leone community. We are right here at Lomley, the Canigo community, in order for you out there to see how people around this community find it very difficult in order to have clean drinking water. Of course, this stuff in front of me can be a clear picture to you as it has been closed for over several hours. Sierra Leone, like any other West African country, faces this challenge. The, the pump will begin, it is broke, no sign of the forget. So we, now so we can manage, we get, if we pump water, we go get, we shift around, we make it fine, or we pin chlorine for let us drink. So this is the strain of risk, look at the world is spoiled. So our, our one, to, cl to cl climb up this place. Okay. Um, what are the challenges you can face when you can get water down 
Then the challenges by the world, bad, I will go claim the further small picking and two where they go can do all the water for further else. I will want to go to claim this world. Pass we can water well and can get for go wash or do any other thing. Okay. So like what are the challenges that we the face really we will not get to pump right now? Well, it's too bad because our area we can't pump not the even if I forget drink water and other hook. So pass we can get this water water. Even if we can use this water for us, a cable pull some rash rash self in our body. So that's how they see. With a stream for water, we not get pump. So now this normal it help we for do we material things in. You know, say we not get pump. So now this what they do for cook, for brook. Now no more the help we because if you pump the day, I know say if you pump the day, for we don't get true pump, for we don't get facility for pump. We pump now day, now lose get for manage. What's the money for tell now? For tell help we. Reporting for waiting now. Abdul XC. Well, people, that's all for the news in this week's show. Tune in next week for more on Sierra Leone and around the world news. Now let's go see what Zainab has for us from Ghana down to Sierra Leone in her corner in the place we call The Zone. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to The Zone, where innovations become reality. Today on Zainab's Corner, as I told you last episode, they went to Ghana. She's back with a very, very good knowledge on how to make Ghanaian beat work. I mean, it is very, very, very wonderful. Without further interruption or introduction, let's join Zainab on Zainab's Corner. Hello, I am Zainab Kana and welcome to Zainab's Corner. Don't forget, we are in Ghana with an exchange program with a sister program in the news generation on the multi TV. Well, in today's Zainab's Corner, Ade Khan Shona Alpha make these um, Ghanaian beats. These are the snails, them. I know everyone knows this is important, first way I can Ghana. So now we can make a long chain. Be careful, oh, this is not nindo. What you want, do one. You get very, very be careful. You see? This is not a necklace. So, be there, In Ghanaian means thank you. In Zainab's corner, Till next time, don't forget we are in Ghana to do and to observe and also to learn. Wow, oh my god, that is so incredible, Zainab. You know, I never knew you are so smart. <laughs> anyway, I'm just playing. That's wonderful. I love those beads. Listen, really, I want one for me, mama. That's 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 good work. Keep it up, Zainab. Next up, let's join out of Sierra Leone landmarks guys you're gonna enjoy it so without further ado let's join the landmarks hello I am Zainab Kano and today I am at the Black Star Square also known as Independent Square the Black Star Square also known as Independent Square is a public square in Accra Ghana it was built in 1961 by Ghana's first president Dr. Kwame Nkuma to honor the visit of Queen Elizabeth II it was Christine Black Star Square. Black Star Square is the site of Ghana's Independence Day Parade, which falls on the 6th of March every year. It also hosts all major public gatherings and national festivals. The Independence Square is the second largest city square in the world after China's Tiananmen Square. It was built to accommodate 13,000 people. The square boasts of two monuments, also known as the Black Star Gate. A statue of a soldier faces the independent arch, symbolizes the countless Ghanaians who lost their lives fighting for Ghana's independence. The independent square situated in Accra is also the only location for the inaugural ceremonies of Ghana's president elections. It's a symbol of the bloodshed and fight of the people against oppressors. Rule and serve as a constant reminder 
of Ghana's indomitable patriotic spirit and the love of the people for the motherland. All right, thank you very much, Zainab, for the wonderful beadwork and for landmarks. Now, it all each time for read we wonderful comments in our Facebook page from our devoted fans. So, without no time to waste, let's join Marina while she reads for us your wonderful comments. Hi, I'm Marina and I'm back again with our Facebook comments from our lovely Facebook fans on our Wait Now Facebook page. Well, for today we have Sigismon H. Williams and we have Adam Nato Love Jala Manad. Well, Sigismon says, you guys are the best. Thank you for letting us know what's popping in our country. And Adam Nato says that I'm super excited to watch each episode of Wait Now. It's always fill my day with joy. Keep bringing us interesting episode. Waiting now, the basic info. Love you guys. Love you so much, Adam Natu and Sigismon. Thank you so much, guys, for loving what we are doing. And we are here to give you the very best on entertainment and news. And also, don't forget to keep liking our Facebook page on www.facebook slash waiting now. Or you can send us an email at waiting now at gmail.com. Yes waitingnow at gmail.com and don't forget that waiting now is a tv magazine show made for and by young people and also please don't forget to like our page on our facebook page www.facebook slash waiting now and send us an email at waitingnow at gmail.com till we meet again i am marina terry all right fans family friends of waiting now we are so in all with you guys we appreciate all your lovely comments please keep sending those comments because we will continue to read them out thank you marina thank you zainab ladies and gentlemen this is it this is it for this week's the zone join us next week same time the zone where innovations become reality well my friends it's now time to join our talented friend alasan jalo in nami area and as you already know, if you want to be part of NAMI Area, just send us an email telling us why you want to be part of NAMI Area at waitingnow at gmail.com or hit us on Facebook at Facebook slash waiting now. I attend the Grammar School. Well, na abadi are yeah. This is the job now. Well, me na science, but I use football and I like football. I use that from small to small. I don't like football. So some sad, sad. Well, fortunate work in common school. Also, one say I do like. If I don't don't study, don't don't do work there. Go and quiet say say this pussy. The only book I draw. Yeah, na they a born na them family then they na yeah they use me when then na back at Kingo school. But so thing that why it's now like I do less and then picking the way they are like old thing make noise and every friend thing do. Then come on school old something friend like read or do that thing or sit down do think no more. Then like that day we come on school play ball all day. I don't work down so I don't click on it. I'm going to Los Angeles and this one I'm here. Hey, Alright, my people and we watch this program. I'm Joseph Richard Abdullah, I commonly call Soundboy Richie. I'm a music producer. Um, and you would watch me, you know, whatever you do, you need to concentrate, especially you would go to school. Um, because my former principal can always tell me say to have prayed well is to have studied well. My true talk to Una is originality maintains dignity. That we learn for be original and that we learn for love and respect each other. Thank you all very much. Peace. It has been some time now 
since the Waiting Now team has been doing reports on Ebola and it has rapidly grown to a very high height in Sierra Leone. I would like to give my condolence to the family of Dr. Omar Khan. May your soul rest in peace and may people learn. Do ya, Ebola is real. Take precaution. Make sure if you go to any office or any public area where get chlorine water, wash your hand. And law avoid too much of handshakes and binding and hugs. You know, for the meantime, law do this prevention because they say prevention is better than cure. Well, me fambulem would all reach the end of this week's episode, but listen, I can not cry, but I need to cry. I want to know thank you we didn't like your page do I not forget for go like we'll be back next week Saturday and each and every Saturday one o'clock sharp okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah I hope you all enjoyed this show and do not forget go to our Facebook page ask questions leave your comments and do not forget to click that like button so like, Buga, like. until next week mm -hmm. waiting now is my show mm -hmm. your, your show, show. Our show, Wait, Wait to Now, you, you already know. know.